Hi Trading Angels, in this video I'm going to be telling you how I do my technical analysis, I'm going to be telling you the platform that I use, the platform that I recommend for new traders to use, why I love it, I'm going to be telling you my little routine with doing my technical analysis, when I do it, how long I spend on it. I know that there's a rumour going around that it only takes 15 minutes a day to be a full-time trader, so we're going to be looking at that is that really true? I'm also going to be telling you a little hack as to how to always get your trades placed at the right time. So that's going to be right at the end. Make sure you stay right until the end. Hit the thumbs up button if you're excited to get started and also make sure you hit subscribe and the bell button if you're not already subscribed. This means that you'll be notified when new videos are out and you won't miss any of them. So I do my technical analysis on a platform called TradingView. This was the first platform that I came across when I first started trading, if I'm being completely honest. But even now with the experience that I have, I still choose to use it. The reason why I like it is because it's got a very simple layout. It looks very clear. It's very easy to use. It's very user friendly. It's very easy to navigate your way around. Also, there are loads of little tricks that you can use and little tools that you can use. It's just a very good platform to use. I really like having my watch list on it. I think that this is really useful just to go through. It saves you a lot of time when you're doing your technical analysis. I also really like that you can save all your templates. So if you have multiple algorithms and multiple systems or strategies that you use to trade, then you can save your templates and you can save multiple templates and they'll be with the exact indicators and the exact settings that you use. So I find that this is really useful for me. Also, I like the fact that they have lots of indicators available on it. They have all the popular ones. And also they've got a library where people have developed their own indicators. So you can search for an indicator on there, which is also very useful to use. If I was trying to find a fault in TradingView, then I would say that they don't necessarily have all of the indicators on there. I think perhaps MT4 does have more or maybe they've got some slightly newer ones. So I know that some people really prefer to use MT4. I will say that MT4 does have a indicator that I particularly like, which is called the MA engulfing. It's when the MAs would cross and there'd be an engulfing candle would appear and a little arrow would also appear to show you which direction the trade was likely to go in. Obviously, you don't just follow the arrows blindly, but used alongside other price action strategies, this did actually work really well. And I really like that indicator and I can't find it on TradingView. So I'm sure that there are platforms that do have more, but I think for a brand new trader, for a beginner trader, definitely TradingView is very easy to use. The best thing about TradingView is that it's free to use. So if you're a brand new trader and you're not sure if you want to carry on trading or you're not sure how committed you are to trading, then you can use it for absolutely free. You do get loads of pop-ups, so it can be a little bit annoying, especially if you're using it quite a lot. So if you're a bit more of an established trader, then perhaps you'll find the pop-ups annoying. Also, what's annoying on the free version is that you can only use three indicators. So again, this is great for new traders if you're not that committed to trading, but once you know that you want to carry on trading, then it can be a little bit annoying. You probably want to upgrade to a paid version. I need to pay something like £11 a month for the paid version and it means that I can save all my templates, it means I can save all my indicator settings and everything and have my watch list. So I think it's definitely worth it. And also what you can do is you can subscribe to one of the paid plans, see if you like it for free, you get a one month free trial. If you don't think it's worth it, then you can just cancel before the month's up. This is TradingView, this is where I do my technical analysis. On the right hand side, you've got your watch list, which is here. So you just add the market that you want to be trading or you want to add onto your watch list by clicking on the cross here and then searching for it and adding it on. And then it'll just appear here and you can click between it. It makes it really, really easy to check the different markets, which is why it's really quick when you know what you're looking for. You can also order it in alphabetical order by clicking on this symbol here. And if you want to earmark it for something, for example, if you want to earmark this for a sell, you can just click on the red and then say if you want to make this into a buy, you click green. This is just an example. I don't want to do that at all. You just click on the side to clear it. Also down here, we've got alerts. If you click there, you can set alerts and you also have the economical calendar. There's loads of different things you can do on here. On the top of your screen, you can see the market that you're trading here. You can also skip between the time frames here. So this is how you switch to the one hour or say you want to switch to the one day. And then you've got your indicators here. Say if I want to type in RSI, 
relative strength index. If you want to save it as a favorite, you just click on the side here and then you've got all your favorites that come up here. If you click on it, it should come up on the bottom down here. If you want to adjust the settings, you click here and settings. So you might want to adjust it. I like to use 10 sometimes on the RSI. Also, if you want to get rid of it, you can click cross. Along the right hand side, you've got loads of different tools as well. You can select, for example, the horizontal line, which is quite useful for drawing support and resistance lines on the chart. If you want to get rid of them, you can always click cross there. If you want to use Fibonacci, you can find it here on the side. I like to use the Fibonacci retracement. That's why I put a little star beside it. This means that it shows up on my chart at all times. So if I want to use it, I just click on here and then I draw it on there. That's not how you use it. I was just doing that as an example. Also along the side, you've got your ruler tool, the magnet tool, which is quite useful as well. And one of my favorite things about TradingView is the templates. So if you put up a set of indicators that you like and you want to save it in a template, you just click here, save indicator template, and then call it something and it will save it with your exact settings. I find this really useful because once you've gone onto one with your exact settings, so for example, if I go into template, that I use for market makers method and these are all the indicators that I use then on the side if I just go to my watch list I just click through it and I can see these indicators on these settings on all of the markets which makes it really really quick just to scroll down and look for what I'm after so I'm going to put a link in the description below if you wanted to sign up to training view and give it a go then use that link so there are rumors flying around that it only takes 15 minutes a day to be a full-time trader. So let's address this now and let me tell you what my routine is for doing my technical analysis and then we can work out how long it really takes to be a full-time trader. So on a Sunday, I look at the one week chart when the markets are closed. So they're still open for things like Bitcoin, but on Forex commodities and indices, they are closed on a Sunday. So I take this time to look at the charts using one of my algorithms that's saved on TradingView. It takes maybe 15 minutes, maybe less than that, maybe 10 minutes only. Um, I know what I'm looking for and because my templates are saved and because I have my watch list, it's really easy. I just click through the watch list. Just looking at anything that looks interesting for the week ahead, I write it down on a piece of paper and then I keep that with me at my computer. Next thing I do is I look at the one day time frame. So often going from Friday to Monday, the one day time frame doesn't work in the same way that it does going from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday. The reason being is that you've obviously had the weekend. So there's, you know, things happen over the weekend. Often the markets react to news as well. So I don't find that the one day time frame actually works particularly well going from Friday to Monday, but I will still look at it because there are certain things that do work. <laughs> so so not everything works. A lot of the indicators don't work going over from Friday to Monday. Um, and a lot of you'll almost get the opposite happening as to what you'd expect. But there are certain things that do work. Um, you know, for example, if I see a shooting star candle on a Friday evening on the one day time frame, then often on the Monday, that market will be heading down but not always. So you still want to go down onto a smaller time frame to double check this. Um, you, you just want to keep an eye on that. So you just want to see, is there anything I want to be keeping an eye on? But more often than not, just because the markets are a little bit um, strange on a Monday and they act differently going, as I say, from Friday to Monday than they do during the consecutive days. I will often, if I'm trading on a Monday, I will usually be looking at a smaller time frame and I'll be placing trades based on that. So then throughout the week, I will be looking at the one day time frame. I'll be looking at it on Monday evening, Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening and Thursday evening. Uh, I do this about nine o'clock in the evening, GMT, because I live in the UK. And that takes maybe 10 minutes. So if you see anything interesting, you just want to write it down and keep a note of it. You're not getting into any trade then and there or jumping into anything. And to be honest, I don't really like to place trades before I go to bed. Um, so it's just to look for trade opportunities for the next day. So on the subject of placing trades before you go to bed, obviously I do it sometimes. Um, and the reason why I'll do it sometimes is particularly if I see it in a market that might be moving overnight. So perhaps a Japanese yen pair or an Australian dollar pair. So these will move while I'm asleep. And therefore, if I see something really good on one of those, then I will place it overnight. But on the whole, I prefer not to. So it really depends on the market and it really depends on what I see. Then throughout the day, I'm looking at the one hour and the four hour time frame, And I'm looking at these hourly and four hourly. Um, 
if I'm really busy in the day and I'm, I've got a lot on, then I will just stick to the four hour time frame. So that's one of the good things about being a trader is that I don't have to trade. I don't have to look at the charts every hour if I don't want to. I don't have to be a day trader. Um, I can be more of a swing trader if I want. Um, so that is kind of my style of trading is day trading slash swing trading. I will close most of my trades within a day, but I do hold some of them overnight or for a few days. So that's one thing that we're kind of addressing as well in this is how long does it take to do technical analysis? How long does it take to be a full-time trader? And if you're a scalp trader, then it does take a lot more of your time and energy. So although I do the odd scalp trade, I don't have this as my preferred style. I do prefer to be more of a day trader, more of a swing trader. I think for people who are working during the day, especially if you're just starting out in trading, and you've got a full-time job and you're not really sure how much time you have to commit to it, then I would say looking at the one day time frame in the evenings is very doable. It means that you're only taking up about 10 minutes every evening once you know what you're looking for. And also you can go then down to the four hour time frame. You can forget about the one hour time frame if you want. You can just look at the four hour time frame, and that means you're only checking the charts every four hours when the candles have closed and you're only needing to check them about four or five times a day. You can forget about the one that closes in the middle of the night because you're probably not going to be setting an alarm to get up and check the charts then. But yeah, it's only going to be about four or five times that you're actually going to be checking the charts. So it is actually quite relaxing to trade on the four hour time frame, And it's a really good option for those of you who are busy and who have a job and who are quite full on in the day anyway. So to answer the question, how long does it take to be a full time trader to trade for your job? It's probably a little bit more than 15 minutes a day, which is the rumor that's flying around. That's how long it takes. It's a little bit more than that, um, but it's not much more. <laughs> I mean, maybe half an hour in the day. Um, so it really isn't that much. I mean, I, I do check the charts quite frequently. If you're just checking the one day time frame, for example, and you're just doing that in the evening, then yeah, sure, that will only take you 15 minutes a day. But I'm then looking on smaller time frames for my exact entries. So that takes up a little bit longer and it means I am checking the charts a little bit more frequently. So I have a rule that I have to do a few things before I'm allowed to trade in the morning. And the reason is because this is a stupid mistake that I made when I first started trading, that I used to look at my phone while I was still in bed. I would react to the market. I would either close trades that were looking a bit scary or I would try and jump into trades which were looking good. And there are so many reasons why this is terrible. First of all, I'm in bed, I'm just woken up, I'm still asleep on some level. So I'm pretty much trying to trade while I'm asleep, which is a really terrible idea. Also, I'm just not in the right frame of mind. So what I always make sure that I do before I'm allowed to start trading in the morning is I have to get out of bed, I have to have a shower, I have to have a cup of coffee, and I have to meditate for 10 minutes. And these just put me in a state of feeling fresh, feeling awake, and feeling calm which are obviously optimum states for trading in. So I think in the future, I'm definitely gonna do a video on common mistakes that traders make and how to avoid them. And that is going to be on it. Always make sure you are out of bed before you start trading. So as promised, I'm going to tell you a little hack that I use to make sure that I'm always placing trades at the right time. I set alarms on my phone for five minutes past the top of the hour every hour. means that the candles have closed before I check the charts and I am reacting to the closed candles and not the open ones. Also another thing that I worked out is that often if the prices are rallying in one direction, say for example that they're going up, they're going up, they're going up and then after the top of the hour they might have a little bit of a pullback and a little bit of a reversal. So for example you want to get in at the best possible time. So if you're placing trades just before the top of the hour then you might find that you go into a bit of a loss. Obviously in trading, you'd want to get the best possible entry. That's a massive part of it. You're already at a loss before you place any trade because the spread's been taken into account. So it's really important to get the best entry you can. And I find often waiting for just past the top of the hour is a really useful trick to getting a good entry. Obviously that doesn't work 100% of the time, but it is just something that I noticed. So if you found this useful, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. This is good for the YouTube algorithm. It means that I can carry on creating this free content for you and that it will reach more people. Next week, I'm gonna be telling you about my Forex journey. So this is something that a lot of people have requested. So I've decided to do a little video on this to tell you the journey that I went through when I first started. 
If you don't want to miss that, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell button now. And if you can't wait a whole week for your Forex fix, then make sure you follow Trading Angel on our other social media platforms.